everybody, Neil here, the Rider Guider. All right, now, I was gonna do this as a Rider Guider quick tip. However, uh, upon viewing the footage, it's worthy of a lot more time than just a couple of minutes of a quick tip. It's quite a serious one, this, and there's a really good message at the end. So I want you to watch it through. It's a killer or a potential killer. And it's one that everybody needs to understand if they're on the bikes and then everybody needs to watch it. Right, let me set the scene. As you can see on my screen, here we are. Front view, rear view. Main thing is the rear view and that's what we're talking about here, protecting our asses or my ass in this situation and as you can see, this is a dual carriageway. I've got four lanes. Lanes one, two, three, and four. Um, what you can't see, and let me set the scene as I said, I've got these gantries over the top, and for the last kilometer, lanes two, three, and four, I've got big X's saying they're all closing. However, it's a worldwide disease. Everybody, every man, and his dog, wants to go screwing down the outside. Now, from what your vision there and what you can see, it's not that busy. However, I'm approaching queuing traffic. This is what I call an unnatural stop. We've got an incident or roadworks bringing everybody to a halt. And then we've got the impatient guys coming down the outside. Now, I am only 300, 350 meters from where this unnatural stop is gonna, have, gonna occur or I'm gonna slow right, right down. And um, I'm in the left-hand lane, the reason being also, not just because the right-hand lanes are closing, but the far left-hand lane also then splits into a, a slip road, just further down the road, if you look at my arrow, which I'm gonna be taking, which I intend to come off at. Now, as such, if I press play by just doing that, we can see, I've got this guy, can't see further than the nose and can't see the signs. And as you can see there, if you look in the distance on that view, I've got traffic starting to build up quite quickly and coming to a stop. I've also got people in the second lanes pushing in. My engine, you'll hear, maybe not yet. Backing down, there Good you go. Man. Now, I've also got that, that car there has just jumped in to join the back, which is fine. He's given up on his attempt to screw down the outside. This guy hasn't. This guy doesn't. Let's keep watching. Look at these bell ends. I said, yeah. They, they, they can't see further under the nose, and they're coming down the outside. And of course, it causes a bottleneck further up while they're jumping, which causes people at the back to have to stop. Unfortunately. Now, as I'm moving down the road, now I'm coming to a slow stop. I've not had. A situation where I've been able to back anybody up behind me or slow anybody down as I'm approaching because we're too far behind. If you look in the distance here, you will see a white car immediately behind me. My stopping point is here, and I end up in a little bit of a situation which you'll listen to. Quite a vulnerable situation here. Quite a vulnerable situation, not just quite, very vulnerable situation. Now look at the size of my mirror, right? There it is on my left hand, and I'm looking in my rear view mirror here, and I'm watching, and I'm contemplating where I'm gonna go if either if that car doesn't stop, or he's half asleep, or whatever. I've got my option down the inside there. I've also got the option to go down the outside and follow these. However, that, as you can see, might not be the best option because they're slowing trying to push in. So my right hand option would be to go right down the outside there and push in lower down. As the vehicle behind approaches, and I didn't see this immediately until I saw where it had come from. When, what happens is I've given myself the option to go down the inside. Now, I'm watching it come, but what I hadn't noticed straight away because my mirror's only small, that's not my problem car. It's this bell end jumping in front of it and then hitting the brakes, which, which we'll discuss shortly. But that car now, and what suddenly appears big and 
getting bigger very quickly in my mirror. Right at the back. There's a slow, there's a look at the this guy coming up behind me. Yeah. Now, did you see where I went? I, I veered left and I'm ready. I'm ready to pounce and bounce, if you like, down that bloody line there. I'm thinking, right, I'm about to just drop the clutch and disappear down here because this dick is about to hit me up the ass or come close. Wasn't comfortable. Very vulnerable situation. We'll come to this as we progress down. Now, the right on my ass. See what I did there? They're, they're still approaching me quick and I couldn't, you can't really afford to be backing people up when you're doing 90 k's an hour. And uh, she wasn't slowing that fast in that little silver Hyundai. So I called on to her. Slowing that, uh, She's up my ass now. That quickly. Now, as I said earlier, I was watching her, that's why I, I, as we get another 50 meters down there, I get a slip road to go to the left so I can come off this particular carriageway. And the main carriageway, the single lane, goes straight on into roadworks. But I get a left hand turn, if you like. Watch her positioning. Oh, I've also got this bell end here, still trying to come down the outside. And I think he's got options to come in front of me. I actually preferred him behind me, so I just let him slop in there, really. He had a decision. But now look, I've got my slip road here. Can you see it? Watch her. She's one impatient bitch. She, she's just thinking, sod him, I'm, I'm going. Concentrate on what's going on behind you. You should always be looking. You shouldn't even have to look in your mirrors because you should already be aware. You shouldn't have to be having to make a... You should be doing it all the time. You shouldn't have to be double checking. You should already know what's happening around you. Now, if somebody asks you, right, don't look behind you, what colour is the car? You should know. You've already seen it a long time before you even have to worry about it. Right, now what I'm talking about is keeping an eye on your rear. Now, onto this road, you see, it hasn't finished with this woman yet. This woman that nearly. I'll come to my options with her shortly, but she's still oblivious to me completely. And this is the mentality of some people that you've got to watch for. I've got now a four lane carriageway, lanes three and four closed, road works. It's a new road. Eventually this will be a four lane carriageway. This will always be a slip road on to that carriageway. This road here does not make its own lane further on. It disappears. Basically where that truck is in front of that car, it comes off. But however, watch my rear view here. Watch what happens. She's oblivious. Keep watching. She's pretty rude as this woman in this silver high what, what the fuck are you doing? Sorry for the effing. Jesus. Now, she was up trying to come up the inside of me. Clueless, absolutely oblivious to the danger she was causing. Twice in the space of two minutes, well, less than two minutes in real world. Now, by the by, all that little scenario caused by her. I'm gonna go back and we're gonna look at what, what I could have won. Let's have a look from here. The situation that I need to discuss, okay? Same scenario, of course, it's the exact same recording. Let's see what happens. And let's see what we should have done differently. Quite a vulnerable situation here. I recognise it was a vulnerable situation. In that instance, I'm at the back. I've got cars approaching at 90 k's an hour and I'm almost at 10. Just horrendous. You know, potentially. The issue is, she is on the brakes, right jumping in. Let's, be, let's not beat about the bush. If it had been wet, I don't think it would have made the slightest bit of difference to her. She'd have been coming in, potentially locking up. She could have locked up then with the beat. The, the car drops at the front. It's dipping as she's hitting the brakes, as she's out braking that car to get into that spot. That's what I was watching for. What I should have done before and potentially, really, is just get out of the way even if there was nothing coming behind, use the fact that you're on an agile vehicle. You're a vulnerable motorcyclist. If you get hit up the ass in a situation like that where people are texting, suddenly hitting the brakes, you're dead. And that's a $3 million bill for the coroners and the police and the ambulance and the fire service, whoever comes out to save you, whoever cleans up afterwards and the months and months of investigation. You might as well Guarantee yourself getting home. It might wind a couple of people up, but you need to get out of the way of that back, back, back position. 
You need to go down the outside like these cockheads here and be the cockhead and jump in. You'll get in and you'll get your left hand slip rod. Oh, in my instance, I could have gone down the inside. I'd have been better off doing that than risking this bell end of a woman risking my life. Now, let's have a look at what I was been talking to in this my, my previous content called Minority Report, where I'm talking about avoiding near misses. Now, what I haven't done here is exactly that. That, from what's just occurred there to me is a near miss and I didn't avoid it. My destiny was in her hands under her brake pedal. And now that's from a motorcyclist point of view, from my point of view, not acceptable. She was in the wrong and I was in the right. But if she'd hit me up the ass, What's the point in being right if you lay down on a slab in a morgue? You've got to take control of your own space and not be in her hands. My life was in her hands. I was relying on her not to hit me. I wasn't moving out of the way. I wasn't, I didn't, potentially I did. I would have got out of the way and I had already clocked what was happening. So it was almost okay but I didn't really make a decision right just before and I could have been well out of the way and it never even occurred that it might have even happened. The fact is I allowed that lady into my zone on her terms and not mine. And that's my area that I didn't control well enough simply because my destiny was in her hands under her brake pedal and her, and her level of control, which I'd question, especially if it had been wet, which it can be in some countries. This sort of scenario can happen in any country where you've got an unnatural stop, be it a traffic accident up front, or again, roadworks. They're not a natural stop. There are no traffic lights. It's just a road where you wouldn't normally be stopping. And you can, you'll get it a lot worse than this in some countries. I'm, I'm from the UK, as you know, and um, it's one of these situations where it's a constant stop start on a motorway. And you need to be lane splitting. You need to find yourself a gap between cars or as I've potentially had to do there is go down the inside. Don't sit at the back and rely on somebody else doing the right thing. Control your own destiny. Don't put your own destiny in somebody else's hands. That was a near miss as far as I'm concerned and it's something that I should have avoided. Let's move on. Thank you for watching that. I hope it's useful. It just puts a little bit of a thought in people's mind for a future reference if you're coming up to a junction to coming up to a, a um what is it like i said an unnatural stop don't sit at the back get yourself into a safe space one day you'll do that go down the outside and there might be an almighty crash behind you where somebody just slams in its back of somebody and you'd be like <laughs> bloody hell correct all right keep it in mind now moving on i'm at about 280 subs 20 more for the Drift Ghost X giveaway. Look, this is an exact reason why you should do it because I've recorded my footage and it's given me the opportunity to learn something. If everybody's got a camera on their head and they look back at the footage, bang, they can learn something like I've done there. I mean, I knew it anyway, but it just sharpens your skills. Get a camera or win one from me, all right? The Drift Ghost X giveaway. It's coming soon, once I've got 300 subs. So if you're not subbed, hit the subscribe button, hit the little bell, and in about 20 or 30 subs, whenever it hits, I'm gonna draw somebody's name out of a hat. But no matter where you are in the world, I will post it free. It's about three or $400 worth of kit, and it's pretty much new, and the box is new. It's like a brand new bit of kit. You've got the microphone, the SD card, everything you'll ever need, all the mounts, your motor vlogging. All right, thanks for watching, guys. I'm Neil. The Rider Guider, hit the sub, see you next time, cheers.